Hi, I'm Janet Prey from Islander Sewing Systems, and today I want to share some of the very best sewing tips that I have to share, and those are sewing ergonomics. Um, by using some of the techniques I'm going to show you today, you'll be able to sew faster, better, and be a far more comfortable and sew longer. So let's get started. First of all, you want to sit in a chair where your feet are flat on the floor and your knees are at a 90 degree angle. Now sit up straight, of course, they always tell us to sit up straight, but you'll be able to sit up straight if you get your chair set so that your elbows are also at a 90 degree angle when you're sewing. This way you're not reaching up like this. If you set your sewing machine up on a table that's higher than you are, then you're going to have to be constantly raising your shoulders. That's going to be uncomfortable and after a while you're going to start to feel it in your neck. So if you like to sew for long periods of time and finish a project like I do, um, take, take these tips um, to heart. Now, second, the next thing I want to talk about is the table surface around your sewing machine. As you can see here, I'm fortunate enough to have this big beautiful cabinet to have my machine set in. And the bed of my machine, which is this piece right here where your, sew, uh, your project is sewn through, that has a flat surface all the way around where I'm sewing. And um, this cabinet even has a leaf in the back that comes up. So whatever project I'm sewing on, even if it's a big coat or uh, a quilt, it will slide along this surface as I sew. If I have my machine up on a table, then the project starts to drag off the edge of the bed. And when it starts to drag off the edge of the bed, it's causing stress on your project and pulling it away from you. So if you've ever really worked hard to sew a seam and it kept fighting you, maybe it was a larger project. When you got done, you had a snake trail of a, of a seam instead of a nice straight clean seam. It, it probably wasn't your fault. You were working twice as hard as you needed to only because you had that drag. So if you don't have the wherewithal, the space to put a nice big cabinet like this, there are a couple of other options. One is an extension table. That's what you see right here. Um, they're generally made out of a nice thick clear plexiglass and they're readily available for any machine, make or model. You can purchase them through catalogs, through websites, and also at your local sewing machine dealer. All the company needs to know that makes it for you is the make and model of your machine, and they will cut out this opening so that it fits nice and snug, because that's also important in what I'm going to show you. It needs to fit nice and snug, so again, you have that continuous flat surface around your sewing machine. All right, so let, let me give you a few tips about how we can sew much easier with this flat surface. And I'm actually going to show you how to sew without pins or basting. And this works in almost every fabric and almost any project. But again, I couldn't do it if I didn't have this flat table surface. Now the one thing that's really important to understand about sewing and why you put pins in, you may not even be aware of why do we have to put the pins in all the way down? Is it to keep the layers together? Well actually it's more about keeping the bottom layer from going through the sewing machine faster than the top layer. How does that happen? It happens by the feed dog. The feed dog are underneath the foot of the machine and they have actually look like little metal teeth. And they come up and move away from, the, um, from you. So they're pulling that bottom layer through. The top layer is only in contact with the foot. The foot's putting a slight amount of pressure on it. So, if you will, the fabric at the bottom is going through just a little bit faster than the top. So for Let's say that you took some fabric, two pieces together, and you just slapped them in the machine and you sewed them. And when you got to the other end, you'll find the bottom layer is shorter. For approximately every nine inches you sew, you're going to lose about a quarter of an inch off that bottom layer for not putting pins in. Now, you put the pins in, the feed dog action is still happening between the pins. And if you're a pin jumper, which means you sew right over the pin, chances are you found a little pin tuck every once in a while next to a pin. That's because that easing is still happening. 
If you are a pin puller, that you're going to continue to allow that, that easing to happen every time you pull the pin out, you're still going to end up with a shorter bottom layer. So let me show you real quick um, just the beginning of what um, my techniques uh, that I have to share with you will do for you. So we're first going to put the uh, fabric into the machine and oh, I'm just going to sew this at a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to make sure all the layers are nice and flush with each other. I'm going to take, this is the most important part, so pay attention, thumb under, fingers on top, and tilt the fabric toward the machine. Thumb under, fingers on top, tilt the fabric toward the machine. What this does is it keeps that bottom layer from going faster than the top layer. This is the way people sew in garment factories. They don't have time to use pins. Everything's going extremely fast. And to keep costs down, they've learned the most efficient way to sew. And that's what I'm sharing with you. So I'm gonna use my left hand with my pads of my fingers against uh, the fabric. And what that does is it helps me guide my correct seam allowance. And it also keeps those bottom layers from shifting back and forth. So it just works this simple. And again, if I didn't have this table surface, I couldn't do this. If all I had was the bed of this machine, I would have no way to be able to do this. So I'm gonna start way back here and I'm gonna stitch all the way up to uh, my left hand is right at the needle and then stop with the needle down. It's important to stop with the needle down because I'm going to readjust the fabric and I want to keep that continuous line of stitching. If I don't stop with the needle down, that could get slightly uh, moved and be out of alignment and then my seam's not clean and smooth. So I come back again, thumb under, fingers on top, tilt the fabric toward the machine and stitch. And what I would suggest, um, if you want to try this, cut two strips of nice firmly woven cotton fabric about three inches wide by 36 inches long. That's what we do in our workshops to show people how to sew like this. And you know, this is a great way to sew if just if sewing is just your favorite hobby, but if you are have a little Etsy shop or you're making things to sell at craft fairs or bazaars, then it's it's even better to sew this way because it is, again, faster and more efficient. So you'll back up at the end of the seam like you always do. And then with this machine, I'm happy to say that I have a thread cutter, which cuts the threads, pulls the top layer of thread to the bottom and cuts it off nice and short. And as you can see, both ends of my seams are lined up. So. That's 36 inches I did, no pins or basing, no rippling, nice and smooth. Again, table surface is so important. Now let's talk about sewing on curves. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make with curves is when they have an inside curve like we have right here, they'll straighten it out to stitch. And actually I taught a class just recently where a student told me that that's how she was taught to sew an uh, inside curve is to straighten it out. Absolutely never do that. What you're doing when you do that is you're distorting the curve and then you're stitching it into place. And it's, if it's a neckline, it's just never gonna lay flat against the body and look nice and clean. So be sure to honor the curve, which means curve as you sew. You turn the fabric as you sew and you get a nice smooth seam. Now when you get to an outside curve, Here's the tricky part. We all have had that problem where we have to, we get almost around the curve and then we have to stop, pick up the foot, go a few more stitches, stop, pick up the foot. If you'll use your hand, like I'm showing you here, to pads of the fingers down and just rotate the fabric as you stitch, you'll be able to accomplish the entire curve very nice and clean and never have to stop and it'll always be a beautiful, beautiful curve. So practice that, a little, a little round piece of fabric, a little curve, but it's all in the wrist, as they say. So work with your machine, and I know these tips are gonna be really uh, your favorites. So go forward, give this a try, and sew comfortable, and have fun.